Hey, my name's John and welcome to Ask John D. Jones. Okay, so in today's episode, I'm gonna answer the question of what a headless CMS is, why you should consider using it, what's shit about using a headless CMS, and generally, can you use a headless CMS with one of the .NET sort of um, players, you know, like an Embraco, an Epi server, or a Sitecore. Okay, so headless CMS might sound like it's in a horror movie or something out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the, co the notion of it's pretty simple, so, one of the fundamental issues of web development over the years, I've been doing it for like 14 years now, is that you build a website, that website might take six months, it might take a year, and then at the end of that website, things have changed. So by the time you've released a website and it's a new platform, sometimes you can be outdated. I remember when um, I was working on .NET Forms and MVC came out. We started working and building this one year project about five months before um, MVC came out. And then by the time it was released, the client wanted to redo the whole website and do it in MVC. Stuff like this happens all the time, you know, technology moves. Nowadays, you know, you might want to build a website in React and you might not want to have so much server-side stuff. So instead of having to start from scratch and you need to define all your document types, all your um, blocks, all your news feeds, um, in, like sources of data, instead of having to start from scratch and doing that, and all your front-end design and reading all your HTML, a headless CMS sort of lets you split your website into two parts. So you still fundamentally have your CMS, and really what powers that doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, it can be you know, C Sharp, it can be Java, doesn't really make a difference. You define your document types in your CMS, you then go and you know, build documents, templates, content editors will go in, they'll add some information, they'll add new stories. Now, in the context of a business, this information doesn't really change that often. And in a headless CMS, what happens is when you start publishing your content, instead of writing all your HTML and your views as server-side logic and all those um, views use sort of CMS APIs to generate and spit the data on pages, instead what happens is the CMS generates a load of JSON. And then in the front end, you pretty much have like a static CMA, um, static website. You can build it however you want. So if you wanted to use React and created a single page application, you could do that. If you wanted to use PHP for whatever strange reason, you could do that. If you wanted to create yourself a few little node servers and read stuff in, you could do that. In fact, if you just wanted to create static HTML, you could also do that. So one of the benefits of obviously this approach is that when someone goes, oh, actually, we want to update our design because it's not responsive now, instead of having this big one-year project, you can actually narrow it down and focus because a lot of the time, your JSON feeds and your API endpoints, they're not going to change. Your data is not changing that much. It's your front-end code. So I anyway, know. I think it's a well-established fact now that anyone who works in technology, that the smaller you can do things, so the smaller you can make your releases, the smaller you can do your user stories, the smaller you can um, branch things, everything like that, the smaller you make things, the easier it is. And with a CMS, a headless CMS, it's definitely one way of making a big project smaller because you're chunking into two different things. And when you're chunking into two different things and you're using JSON, they're not tied in, so you might want to upgrade your CMS, and if you're upgrading your CMS, this won't affect at all how your front-end website looks. So this might mean you might switch from EpiServer to Sitecore, and as long as your JSON feeds aren't changing too much and your endpoints are sort of the same, then you know you could probably get away with minimal front-end work. So that explains what a headless CMS is. Sounds amazing, right? Sounds pretty good. Um, so as I said, I started recently working on a headless CMS and there's definitely like a few hidden gotchas and a few um, things that you need to consider. Now say if you're working with a CMS like EpiServer, EpiServer and their APIs provide things like content areas and they also provide um, things within the content areas like visitor groups, um, there's caching, there's multilingual, and there's like a load of sort of um, server-side logic which can be done which determines how things are displayed. Visit, um, a B testing is another perfect example. Now the problem is that when you're getting everything from JSON, you're starting to lose all this context. So if you are um, got a membership site and say you want some logged in content and some not logged in content, Actually, that's a terrible example. Scratch that. So we've got a content area in EpiServer, and we want to display um, an A-B test. 
With EpiServer, we can just do all that in the CMS and use one of their APIs to decide what we should render out. When we're using a headless CMS, all we've got is a JSON output feed, and then it's up to us to implement our own logic. So at the moment where I'm working, there's definitely a lot more work having to be done um, to try and get everything to integrate with these JSON feeds and work. Now, one of the systems we're working on at the moment is, um, it's a big commerce web platform, I won't really say any brands and stuff, but the decision was made not to use their sort of head which goes on top of it, which everyone else uses. Instead, the company decided to create their own sort of JSON feed on it so they could have a completely headless web deployment. And one of the problems with this is then they've started to having to look into their own caching mechanisms, um, data issues, um, trying to track down where things happen. So this is definitely one of the things that um, I didn't really think about headless before I started working on it, is that because everything's in JSON, actually what you're doing is you're taking a lot of the logic which used to be out the CMS and you're placing it into your website. Now hopefully, this doesn't happen at the moment, but in a few years time it'd be really nice to see maybe some of the CMS vendors, if they created their own sort of JavaScript frameworks, which could then somehow implement into or hook into their CMS, and that way you could still have your data coming from a headless JSON feed, but then you could have a um, JavaScript framework which then sort of did all the magic like um, visitor groups and all that sort of good stuff for you, without having you having to do it yourself. Stuff like that would be awesome. So, as I said, headless medium is really good. I mean, obviously things like React is becoming bigger and bigger. And if you want to do a SPA with a CMS like EpiServer or Lambraco, it just doesn't really make any sense because a lot of the things you need to do, like visitor groups, um, they come from the APIs and there's not that much point in spending a lot of money on one of these CMSs and having to rewrite all this functionality. So, headless CMSs are quite a good idea. I think you should use them. Um, if you're using something like EpiServer and Sitecore, I'm not sure the CMSs are there completely. I mean, the good news is that EpiServer does have a headless API um, in beta, I think, or just about to be released. I've had a look at it a bit, and it does what it says. You know, you can create some page types, you can then access these page types from JSON, so you can do some pretty cool things, and there's some flexibility. I don't think I'd still um, recommend doing a SPA with an EpiServer fully. It's definitely um, a headless C uh, API. It's pretty good, so you could, you know, add a bit more flavor and maybe a bit more dynamic instances into your pages so you can create your document types and you can have data coming from feeds then you can use something like angular to maybe you know populate some of the pages to help uh, in performance and stuff like that um, sitecore has also released their headless api it's in version 9 again these are um, these two cmss they're probably the biggest um, .NET cmss they um they're pretty good, um, but they're saying again, this is right at the beginning of you know them providing validation and support for headless. So you know these are very basic sort of functionalities. I do think in you know maybe five or six years time, if headless is the way that everyone's going, and it sort of seems like it is, that these you know, functions and features and potentially you know frameworks which can hook into it, stuff like that is going to sort of get more and more detailed. But again, at the moment, you could definitely do um, a site core build. If you had to create like a little mini site, you could probably use headless CMS, create an SPA, and then bang it out. Stuff like that would be really good. EpiServer wise, I said, I don't think um, I'd use an SPA, but I'd definitely use some of the um, headless CMS stuff so I could use some JavaScript and potentially share that between different sites. In terms of Umbraco, um, as far as I'm aware, there isn't any Umbraco headless CMS at the moment. I mean, you could probably create something yourself with um, not that much pain, but at the moment it's probably not as well supported as the other two CMSs. So anyway, I hope that sort of answers some of the questions. Um, what are headless CMSs? Headless CMS is basically just a, C a CMS which um, allows you to talk and get all your information about your pages and your components or whatever it might be um, through JSON rather than through um, any backend APIs. You can then use RESTful services to access your information and it means that you're um, sort of splitting out and decoupling your CMS code and your website code just so that in future you'll have a big savings if you ever want to rebrand or you know do some remodeling or you know even upgrade your CMS. So anyway hope that sort of explains it. Now the good news is at the moment we're on 96 subscribers. All of you watching for a long time might know that I'm trying to hit 100. The goal was by the end of the year but actually now 
I think we could probably do it by the end of the month. So I just need four more people to subscribe to this. So if you want to make my day, and I'll call you a legend if you do, because um, it's on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button. I'll call you a legend and we can hit 100 subscribers. I'm not really sure what's going to happen when it hit 100, but it's a goal to go for. Um, anyone who's watching this has subscribed, thanks very much. You are legends. Again, if you want to learn a bit more about headless, maybe a bit more about um, CMSs and Braco Episerver Sitecore, head over to my website. My website is johndjones.com. That's J-O-N-D-J-O-N-E-S.com. Over there, there's like 600 to 800 tutorials on different things between Braco Sitecore, um, good practices on software development. You can even uh, help get a few tips over there how to find a job and how to get better at job interviews. If you have your own question which you want to ask, um, this is how most of the questions for these videos get um, come about, then just go onto my website and there there's a big green contact button, fill um, the form out there, ask it and I'll answer it in a few weeks time. Other than that you can just leave a comment, all comments you leave I will try and reply to and I do respond. Other than that, hope you have a great day and catch you next time.